a man shall leave his father and mother and come and join his wife and become one flesh and the bed of uh, marriage must not be defiled let each one depart from iniquity iniquity contaminates and weakens the foundation so it's no longer the foundation of god praise the lord parenting how do we live together how do we manage sex in marriage what about finances what about prayer in addition to the challenges i've mentioned of infidelity divorce all manner of challenges in the home now covid came a lot of families have suffered loss of income things are becoming tougher so you see somebody is living in one place the wife is living in another place that already presents a challenge that must be resolved and handled with godly wisdom how do we handle family children growing up and so on and so forth so let's be ready to to discuss this morning we ask some questions and ushers can give us papers write down five things you would like to see in your partner in your in your spouse five things you would like to see your spouse change for the better to improve five things do you see today that you like but let's not focus only on the negative things write down five things you can see in your husband or wife that you like today you like her to continue and then five things you have seen yourself that you must improve because the bible says before you remove the speck from another person's eye remove the log in your own abby and this involves singles as well you want to get married what would you like to see so what is that thing you are seeing that is making you go all this length I want all singles to write down what are those five things you are seeing you want to see in somebody you want to be your spouse and then as a single as well write down five things you are bringing to the table gone are the days you come into marriage with entitlement mentality if you want your spouse to bring something you must bring something to the table as well am i correct you're not answering me now sisters iphone should not be what should impress you to marry a man or somebody's buying you data i get very angry the way some nigerian ladies fall for men because of they are sending you data sending you recharge kind of are you that cheap give me a break in our own days is to carry somebody to uh, to mr big and my chicken come on Please don't cheapen yourself. This morning I was telling them about a man who wanted, promised a, a, a young lady Apple products. I'll buy you Apple products. Ah, she opened up herself, everything. The boy collected. He said, I will send you by next weekend Apple products. Called her. Are you at home? Say, I told her, okay, somebody's coming to deliver I've, the Apple products I promised you are on the way. When the package came, she opened it. She saw a pack of 12 apples some boxes of apple juice apple pie and anything that comes from apple is that not what he promised <laughs> apple products praise the lord let me call my wife to come and coordinate so that i will not be looking at things only from men's angle this is my own my own honey don't help me toast my wife <laughs> Go and toast your own. I, I, know what to, I know what to say. I know what to do. Don't, don't help me. She's the wife of my youth. God bless you, Jerry. You don't mind them. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. So we had already gone far um, in the other service, and we'll continue from where we stopped. We, we asked ourselves some questions so that we'll be able to read each other's mind and help ourselves at this time because whether we like it or not we have agreed that with the times our marriages have been experiencing some changes now as Christians as homes under God how do we cope at this time so to give us time why we just write anything we want to write because um, in the other service when we wrote about five things we would expect 
We want our spouse to do better or change. We saw a lot of interesting things. Please don't um, hold back because it will help others also. But before then, I just want to read something interesting. It just take me five minutes. I was uh, called to minister somewhere and the, the, what they gave me to minister on was dealing with a difficult husband. Praise the Lord. Managing a difficult husband. It was very wonderful. But I also went at that same time and put up things that also show that a wife is difficult because it's not only husbands that can, dif that can be difficult. I want to read out both parts quickly and let's see whether we fall into, into that category. Traits of a difficult husband. We started with the husband thinks he knows it all. He points out all your mistakes and never has any mistake. The husband has unhealthy control of the wife, decides whom, who she must visit, whom, who she must not visit, tells her how to spend her money, and practically just controls everything. The husband complains about any and everything, including the food, the state of the home, everything there is a complaint. The husband involves his family in every issues that happen at home. The wife feels very tense and walks on eggshells when she's around her husband because she doesn't know what's going to happen next. It makes you have self-doubt and low self-esteem. Is somebody feeling it? <laughs> it makes light of her emotion and tells you you are trying to blackmail him when you try to um, feel bad or show your emotions. They are champions of the submit scripture. They don't know any other scripture, but the Bible says you should submit. They use the, the scripture and quote it out of context to control and manipulate. They refuse to welcome your relatives into the house. Complaints about everything, very controlling, never sees the need to apologize. They use things that you discussed with them earlier to humiliate and shame you. Shouts you down and reprimands you in public. You are the only one that needs to change. They don't need to change. This difficult husband is likely to have an affair and throw it in your face and blame you that if you had behaved better, he will not go outside to meet another woman. He justifies all his actions, criticizes you in a way that makes you very hot. Your emotional needs are not attended to. Attempt, attended to. He is envious of your success, makes light of your achievement and minimizes all your talents, never appreciating or recognizing your efforts, threatens you and terrorizes you and tells you that he did you a favor by marrying you lastly they are likely to hit you praise the name of the lord now let's go to the woman she whines and complains about any and everything she wakes up complaining she sleeps complaining she's obstinate and very irrational in her ideas. She's disrespectful, refuses to relate with spouses, family members, tries to cut off her husband from his family and his friends at every time. She is not a good home manager. She does not manage money well. She does not keep the home tidy. She reads meaning into everything. She sulks when she does not get her way. Instead of discussing her issues, she just enters into a shell and makes the house miserable. She sees herself as a victim all the time. She cannot put her ideas across without shouting and making a scene. She's suspicious of her husband's intention without any proof. These ones are paranoid. They check the phone. They can even wake up at 2 a.m. to see whether you are asleep so that they can carry the phone and check the phone. They are paranoid about everything. Now, they are unwilling to let go of past misdemeanors. Once their husband has made one mistake, they will continue to talk about it. Even if he has apologized, 10 years later, they will bring it up. That is typical of women. They bring these things up at every opportunity. They are unwilling to help in anything financial in the home due to a mindset that the husband should be the sole provider. They are not interested in helping their spouse become a better person. They use sex as a weapon as a tool. Once anything, anything has happened, they close up until relations become better. She is not trustworthy. She makes the home uncomfortable and unwelcoming for the man. Praise the Lord. So those were what we came up with. Does it shine light on any, anything? Does it make you feel like you are not a good spouse? 
Or is your spouse you are judging? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're going to start looking at all these things. And please, you can contribute or send in your own. Somebody says, how do you change the perspective of a man that is always citing instance with the olden days marriage? For instance, a woman that is working will still return home and do all the house chores without the man assisting, even if he has the time. Praise God. You are the one on duty. Somebody applying maybe our parents' style to now is unrealistic. This morning we said the tenets of marriage, the core, must remain the same, which is what I tried to lay the foundation before I came down. So, a husband, a man shall live with his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Two of them become one. The foundation is on God as, as Christians. Husband is the head of the home. The woman submits to your husband, but love each other. And in that inequality, make it equal. That's what I said. In, the, in that context, in today's world, a woman who is working, she's a human being like you, the man. So we must remove that mindset. Amen. Until we had so many people staying with us in the house, my wife and I would do the work together. She cook, I cook. She wash, I wash. In those days, when we are just starting, the uh, Rivers Water Corporation still used to supply water. But the water will come at around 2 a.m. So when water comes, we wake up, we go and fetch water, fill our drums, and then go back to sleep. We had a cooker. Then we, what we could afford when we were getting married was electric cooker. The one on tabletop with two burners. When they partake light, whatever we are cooking, we stop. No matter how hungry we are, we will wait until Nepa bring light. If they bring light at 1 a.m., two of us will wake up and go and finish the cooking and wash up. That's cooperation. As a man, it doesn't reduce you. In fact, it makes your wife cherish you more. Yes, there are some women who will take advantage of that. But all that has to be managed. Praise the Lord. When men try to make it look as if Oh, their wives must do the housework. She went to work like you. Both of you, it's not as if she's been at home. Both of you came back the same time. And then you go and start watching premiership. And expect her to do all the work. I tell those men, I'm praying for you. And God will answer my prayer. He will carry you to live in America. Say amen. Yeah. Or carry you to go and live in the United Kingdom. Where there's no help. And then you must do it. So... Because we're in this environment, we take advantage of that, which is okay if you have help. But if we must help, there's nothing wrong with it. I said this morning, we have seen, we have seen ourselves finished now. Your husband and wife, you see yourself, you see your nakedness, you know your weaknesses, you know your strength. So there's nothing to hide. So, but there's nothing wrong in helping. Arranging for things. If you are not the kind of man that knows how to do things, you can help your wife to plan and organize. Like now, my, we have people in the house who help us and things. But I still get involved in planning. Say, look, let's do this way. This one should be now. This one should be next. Or this one should be like that. But at least show interest. And let me also ask the men whose wives are just the younger ones who are just beginning to have children. When your wife has a baby, please do not take it for granted. That is when to show your love by really um, helping her. Show some compassion, some sympathy. Because the woman is stressed. She's going through hormonal changes and psychological stress. So at that point is when she needs you most. Not a lot of men push their wives away when they are pregnant. Nobody you do them like that. They push her away for nine months. Eh? I beg, just go to another room. When she gives birth. Do... When I discovered me, I learned almost the hard way. My wife and I, we are very good friends. Everything has been rosy, rosy friends. Until she had a baby and this thing was happening. She was, she wake up in the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., feeding baby. And after baby had eaten, that's when the baby wants to play till morning. Am I correct? And then me, I would go to work by, before 7. So one night like that, she was feeding, washing, doing everything. I just told her, I said, look, wait till me all this. Do this thing quietly now. 
you don't know that I'm going to work. Allow me to sleep. Oh, you want to sleep? <laughs> oh, you want to sleep, Abby? Then that was the night my eyes opened that I've been selfish, very selfish and self centered. So she started shouting at me for the first time. I now started begging her because my eyes just opened. My eyes just opened. I said, ah, please, please, it's okay. It's okay. Please, I'm sorry. So, but a lot of men are like that. Please, may you not carry all this, not this thing. Enter the other room, I beg. Stop, don't disturb me with all this. No, 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 no. It's not like that, though. So, let's not look at it. Let's not look. It's not, it's not bringing us down. How will I say it? It does not lower our esteem as men if we help one way or the other. Praise the Lord. Some men will ask me now that, okay, if my tire goes down, will my wife help me change tire? That's why God gave you muscles to change tire. She can be helping you there. Praise the Lord. When we were coming up, we had a funny car. I've told you about that car before. My wife used to push car. She would push with me. After a while, I gave her, there's one hammer we used to put in that car. It's a five. If you have driven a 504 before, you know the problem with Kickstarter. I will leave her with the car to drive. Then when she goes, there's something they call stop and quench. Not all these new cars are driving now. When you get to where police stop you, you stop and quench. The car will not move again. But then I've taught her, I just open the bonnet, knock on the, this thing, the car will start. So there was a permanent hammer in the car. I want the youth to hear this. Oh. When you see Pastor Gide, they come out, they drive motto, you think, say, ah, this guy, you say, he get us where we start from. Oh. The car did not have window. Uh, yes, we had only one winder, which we had to use it. Thank God. You sabi that thing. The way you are doing your hand, you sabi that thing. You go and fabricate iron winder. That winder is for everybody in the car. Then the ogakpata pata of it all is when we are driving and the wiper stops working and it is raining. Usually, I will collect her head tie and begin to use hand to. We have passed through all that. But if we did not cooperate, it wouldn't have worked. But it worked for us. And today we have passed that level. Nobody should look at me as if you see me driving Canada, it dropped from here. It didn't drop from heaven, no. We know where we, there's a place we started from. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't reduce you as a man. It does not reduce your, your esteem or anything to help your wife. In fact, it shows that you have strength. You have strength of character. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it shows that you're a responsible man. When I was growing up, when they introduced somebody to my parents, my father would normally ask, is he a responsible man? I didn't understand them. He meant, is he married? Does he have a wife? See, if he does not have a wife, he's not responsible yet. He has, he has no, they call it, he, has, he say he has no bukata. Amen. So let's, let's, let's try to help young people you are hearing me now. I've seen a lot of young men, to my disappointment, who get married, and they bring this old in ancient mindsets I see today and it's a disappointment so young men listen that's not how to do it help your wife it doesn't remove anything from you if anything it will make her love you more praise the Lord hallelujah Amen. praise the Lord I remember years ago I was riding in a car with somebody and he was talking to his his son and telling his son who was newly married give your wife chair to sit down I won't forget those words. Give your wife chair to sit down. She's growing wings. He said, I can see it. If you don't control it now, there'll be trouble. By the time she counseled that man from where we were to our village, I said, this man's marriage will not work again. Because I heard the kind of destructive things that he was sowing into the mind of the young man, who is his own son. He was destroying their home with his counsel. Why? Because of mindsets. Mindset very important. We must renew our minds when it comes to our homes and we must be intentional. My husband always uses these words on me that his friend says that Igbo women don't stay in marriage and that why didn't he ask them question about Igbo women before marrying an Igbo woman. So anytime I do something, he will always say, now I know that my friends were right. What should I do? Do you think Igbo women are not good to marry? You can't say that now. No, you should be the one answering. If you're married to an Igbo woman. Praise the Lord. 
It is even wrong to stereotype. It's very wrong to stereotype. Igbo man, Igbo woman, uh, Yoruba man, Bini man, this is how they behave. No, 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 no. Don't stereotype. Prayerfully pick your spouse. Deal with them according to who they are. Praise the Lord. If it was by stereotyping, my own marriage would not have worked. I'm a Yoruba man from the West. She's from the uh, Delta Aniocha. And I remember when we were about to get married, and some of my relatives would say, Watch him very well, though. Yoruba people. He ain't gonna marry second wife. He <laughs> said, You'll marry second wife. Oh. So one day, one of her elder brother, eldest brother, was speaking to her. I had just gone to visit them in the house. We we're about to get. I went somewhere. I came back. The man was telling her, "Watch him well." And now appeared. Then the man just froze. <laughs> <laughs> because I just enter here and say, "Ah, you're a bad boy." <laughs> so don't stereotype. Every man, every woman has a personality. They have their own individuality. Deal with them according to such. And you shouldn't be letting our friends be telling us things about our spouses. It's not correct. Praise the Lord. After this one, let them. Uh... Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Why must a man use fingerprints or thumbprints on his device if he's not hiding something? Please, I need men to answer. Thank you. Can any man answer why you use passwords that your wife if you are not hiding something this is thrown open to the men no no pastor let the men answer can a man answer especially if you have this on your device daddy can you help us because i was going to call you. <laughs> praise the lord hallelujah if such question comes up, that means there's already a lot of suspicion in the home. Marriage cannot work if there is no trust. Fingerprint, eye print, <laughs> leg print, all these things are just symptoms of a major problem behind. There is somebody who may not put anything upon his phone and yet he's hiding something. And there's somebody who put it, perhaps because of technological issues right now. If you misplace your phone and somebody easily picks it, he can access very sensitive information. Therefore, some people do put password. I did it sometime and I saw that my wife wasn't comfortable. I removed it. I saw, yeah, this is my phone. When he rings, go and answer. Henceforth, she doesn't even check my phone. It isn't necessarily because somebody is hiding things. If somebody wants to hide something, he will still hide it. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. There is a problem in that relationship. There is lack of trust. There is no confidence between husband and wife. And that's why we need to come back to the table. And we need to discuss as Christians. Because the only thing that will keep a man or a woman... From going out is Christianity. It is not that ring you are putting on your leg, on your finger. No, it is not. Pastor said it. You are in the front of God and you made a promise. If you do not fear God, you will not fear your husband or your wife. So let's get back to the basis. Let's go to the foundation. What is wrong in our home? The person who is looking at the husband phone, something is wrong with you already. You don't trust that man. Maybe he gave you reason not to trust him also. Who knows? But two of you need to sit down and find out what is wrong with our home. And why are we suspecting one another? If you see me, some, it's not just the phone. You may see me and there's a young lady sitting near me in my car. And you say, ah, oh, that you near my car, you won't find her. And then my wife hears his and she blows up. That means she doesn't trust me. But if she trusts me, she says, I know who I have married. And when I get home, I call her, oh, I pick so, so, so person. I say, I told you. He will tell me who he carried. So let us really create that confidence, that trust. Because that will remove all this issue of checking phone, and stro strolling to, I mean, scrolling to check who he called, who did you call. The phone is ringing. You want to go and find out who is calling. It's a sign of 
lack of trust. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Thank you. Have you seen that uh, thing where a phone was ringing and the man ran out of the bathroom naked? <laughs> Don't pick that phone. Don't pick that phone. It is well. <laughs> Again, Praise the Lord. Talking about suspicion. <laughs> talking about suspicion. Just like my wife just said, there is this thing about somebody whose phone was ringing and the wife picked it and she heard the lady's voice. Number you're calling is busy. She went to tell the man that, who is that girl? When I called you that was telling me that your number is busy. It's all suspicion. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we must learn to be open to answer like that the uh, Oyuma has said. And, but then let me also say something based on the question we got this morning. Sometimes they say there is no, there is no smoke without fire. Some of us have positioned ourselves to be suspected. Somebody sent me a question this morning, and I'm sure it's one of those ones you are holding. That is there anything wrong if you have a challenge? Is there anything wrong going to your ex-boyfriend to collect money or to tell him? It's, or, yeah, to collect money, yes. It is wrong. Not even only money, you should not be communicating. If you have an ex-boyfriend or a, a, an ex-girlfriend, you shouldn't be communicating. So if you are communicating with such a person, your spouse will suspect you. And if you do that, you open yourself to all manner of unnecessary uh, embarrassment and even temptation. And I shared something here this morning. is what we have seen. Many years ago, my wife is reminding me the, the full story now because I didn't even remember the details. Many years ago, we were already counseling a couple they had set a date and somehow the lady went somewhere and saw her ex-boyfriend and you know i'm getting my oh praise god for you blah 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 blah, blah, blah. outside the city and uh, one thing or the other happened the guy offered ah where are you staying ah, let me arrange it. anyway arrange a hotel for her after some time he appeared one thing led to the other and they had sex and when we were about to do a wedding, we normally do pregnancy test. She was pregnant. And the man was adamant. I did not sleep with her. These are serious situations for the church. If the brother said he didn't sleep with you and you are pregnant, where did it come from? So these are some things we see. But that sister did not plan it to happen. Do you understand? She did not plan to go back to, but because of this lack of discretion or indiscretion, the Bible says we should walk circumspectly. Be careful. Just a little bit of carelessness, this mistake happened. And the, the, the consequences are far-reaching. Amen. So let's be careful. But like that you said, the key thing is we must trust. We must trust... Uh, the reason why I don't have password on my phone, my wife puts password on her phone, is because of the children. No children will go and do a manner of things, download things, finish your data, do a manner of things. That's why she was putting on. I don't put on mine because as daddy, before you pick my phone, you must think twice. <laughs> Not because of anything, but it's just like that. You can't just pick my phone, but mommy's phone ah, is for everybody. So she will put password. But then that trust must be there. My wife does not check anything. Some women will check their husband's pocket, check every note somebody sent, check the text messages. What are you looking for? Even if there is something, do you know it's better you don't know? The moment you find out, you lose your peace. You lose your joy. And like I tell some women who make gragra, my husband, eh, eh, pastor, ask him, who was he talking to? Why must he leave the room? I said, look, that man is still showing you respect. That's why he's hiding. If he comes to you and says, yes, I have a girlfriend, so what do you want to do? Then what will you do? Because we have seen such cases. Oh, you say, oh yes, who is, uh, who is, um, who is Juliet? She's my girlfriend. It's because of your behavior that I, I, I have a girlfriend. So what do you want to do? Then what do you do? Eh? Your Bible will say, oh, party now. 
So let's calm down. I love that boy's video. Let's be calming down. Let's be, let's be, be calming down. Let's know how to manage this matter. God will help us in Jesus' name. My husband cheats on me and throws it at my face, telling me I'm too lame and I don't satisfy him in bed. To the extent that the girl sends messages, please help me because I don't know what I feel anymore, if it is regret or hatred. Praise the Lord. You need just come for counseling and there's something very fundamentally wrong there. Praise the Lord. I am, for this thing about cheating, I know that in our society they say it's uh, more forgivable when men do it. I don't know where that is coming from. I don't think anybody should cheat on their spouse. I think it's the most disrespectable thing you can, disrespectful thing you can do to your spouse. And talking from the aspects of a woman, it damages a woman. It damages her self-confidence, her self-esteem, everything about her when she realizes that her husband is having an affair. And worse, if he now throws it in her face and says that, do whatever you want. That kills something in that woman. I was telling my husband yesterday, we were talking about a lady who her husband has repeatedly been doing this thing. And I told my husband, I was afraid that she said to me that her prayer night is that the man should die. So that she'll be free. Sometimes when we do these things, they are far reaching. The emotional hurt and depth is always too much. And let's consider it, is it worth losing our marriage for? We can discuss things. If your wife is not good in bed or satisfying you, I don't know what the parameters you are using are, both of you can talk about it. That's why you're friends. What is the meaning of good in bed? These people talk about. That's what I'm saying. I don't know the parameters they are using for this good in bed. And not which good. which ma marking scheme are they using to mark? <laughs> which which marking scheme are they using to mark that somebody is good or somebody is not good? Some Amen. Watch, some watch pornography. Is it because you are watching pornography? Those things you see on pornography are not real. And that is what is destroying many people. We mentioned that this morning. Husband and wife, whether I'm married or not, you have no business with pornography. Because those things you are seeing there are not real. They're not things you can achieve in your own relationship. So don't go there. Apart from that, it is sin. And also, again, you are being, th demonic things are being projected into your mind. And, the, and then your mind is captured. The, the person that wrote this morning said her husband watches pornography and masturbates. That guy is in bondage. The devil has captured the mind. And I told them 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, that, 4, that says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's not talking about witches in your village. The strongholds the Bible is talking about weapons of our warfare is the mind. Strongholds of the mind. Images you have seen in pornography that are controlling you because now your mind is being controlled. And then you can't get those kind of responses from your spouse, from your wife. You, you look for other things to, to achieve what you are seeing. But what you are seeing is not real. They are all stage managed. Someone say, ah, a man should last in bed for, for one hour. Where is that door? Is he a man that God created? <laughs> oh, a woman should do this. Where are we getting all these things from? Let us go and clean up our minds. And if, because sex is actually very important, so it's something that husband and wife should discuss without shame. But I discover a lot of couples can't discuss it because of mindset. mindset. A woman comes and discusses with her husband how to have sex properly, and the man begins. <laughs> I don't know say this one don't spoil you. <laughs> this guy has not spoiled before. We can, we can. But you, not only were you spoiled before marriage, you were rotting. Maggot, they come off of your body. Before God finally had mercy on you and saved your soul. So why are you saying somebody don't spoil? Brethren, it's something we must and should discuss openly. How do we do this thing? Ah, you, you and your husband met and you tell him, ah, oh boy, you left me hanging, you know. It's in no rich, oh. Say, oh boy, how, how would I make you rich now? You talk about it, there's nothing, this is about it. And stop looking at me the way you're looking at me. 
<laughs> That's why I told children to leave this place. Don't look at me like don't look at me like that too. You to stop. My wife said, you too they shy. I say you should stop. I should stop. How you take care of four children? <laughs> Please, let us say this thing as it is. So. <laughs> it's something that is very important in marriage, money, food, and sex. They are extremely important in marriage. That, that should, we should not allow them to cause trouble. We should discuss them. We should be open about them. If you can't resolve them on your own, come for counseling. The elders are here. Marriage counseling are here. Pastor is here. Come and talk to us. We will help you. There's nothing to hide there. There's no, there's no big deal. Praise the Lord. So it's something we should take seriously. Uh, pornography, no, no, no. If you're a man or a woman, you find yourself looking at that thing, you need deliverance. Please just come and cry out, I need help. Because your mind has been taken over. Amen. Amen. I wish God would open our eyes to see what I'm talking about. Some men go outside. When you have adultery, you open the door. Unfortunately, when the door is open, it does not affect only you. It's your wife, your children, your generations. Un unless you deal with it. You've opened the door. You've invited demonic forces and activity into your life. When you go outside your marriage to have sex. And it goes on and on. You, 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 you just have to deal with it. Young men, young women, you are not married. You are having sex, thinking you are having fun. You have already opened the door. You are, you are mortgaging your future. It's like somebody who is selling. Uh, it's like somebody who has gone to borrow money and has sold off everything he will ever make in future. Saying that is the interest. You are paying interest to the devil. You don't know. If you have been in that situation, come and seek help. Nobody will judge you. That's why we are here. The church is a hospital. The church is a dry cleaning service by the word of God and the spirit of God to clean us and help us from all these things. So nothing to hide about it. But let's come out of these things and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me talk about one mindset before I hand over again to you. Another mindset, now that we are talking about sex, is the young men who believe that before I marry a woman, I need to test her. Like this thing they are talking about. How do I know she's good in bed? Is that why you are marrying her? Who told you that you are good in bed? I want to know whether she can get pregnant. Where did that come from? It's from the pit of hell. And I told them this morning, because you slept with a woman before you married her and she got pregnant and then you aborted it, say, okay, now I know she can get pregnant. Who told you she will get pregnant when you marry her? Because when God does not open the door, no man can open it. And God can be looking at you and you are fooling yourself. When she comes into your house, then she doesn't get pregnant. Then what happened? What will you do? Amen. We have seen couples that we have counseled where the brother, the men will tell us, oh, they say this is wrong with me, but I have it's impregnated. It's not possible. I see, it's not possible because I have impregnated, impregnated so many. <laughs> no, don't laugh. Please don't laugh because this is somebody's trouble we're discussing. So it was about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Don't laugh about it. He came and said, it can't be because I have impregnated people. But now you have married, you can't impregnate. Let's not joke with this thing, no brethren. It's very serious. You're a sister, you're busy sleeping around thinking that you're having fun. Say, when I get married, I will settle down. I will repent. Please. Amen. All right. This brother was 100% sure that it wasn't his fault when we were counseling them. It was like, ah, it's my wife's fault. I know it can't be me. Only for us to do tests, the sperm count or something else. He said, it's not possible. I've been impregnating girls. But then, you know, we never know. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please, I'll take this question. Mommy, should please help us answer this question. I love my in-laws, but they make me know that they do not like me. No matter how hard I try to please them. What should I do? My husband does not see anything wrong in it. You love your in-laws? You love them. You love, I, I love them, but they make it known to me that they do not like me. Okay. And my husband maybe feels that I should just move on and not bother about it. Yes. They, they let her know that they don't like her. Anyway, my advice to everybody here, married women especially, is to continue to show love to your in-laws and pray for them. You know you are coming from a different home 
and your in-laws you met them in that home so whatever you know you will do to show them love and to make them to love you please do that you might not be 100 percent but just continue to show love as much as you can and god will help you prayerfully in jesus name Amen. praise the lord five things i would like to see my spouse this was a single lady something interesting is here it says he must be god fearing then he must be able to grow with me and able to put heads together he must be kind-hearted and take my family along as i would take his too he must be calm and have a soft heart but that doesn't mean he wouldn't do things like a man then the fifth one he shouldn't be a mommy or daddy's boy because i wouldn't take that from him <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord that shows so much authority already you won't take that from him <laughs> it's not about you it's about god you have to prayerfully put all these things into prayer and pray that um, the lord will help you in jesus name it says please how do we handle a spouse who gives this little attention to you he literally gives all his attention to his laptop than me he barely has meaningful conversation because he's always pressing his laptop morning and night. Answer now. Praise the Lord. Answer the question. Okay. I think if you people have a good relationship already and you have a friendship. It shouldn't be a problem. That means that, like that Dr. said, there are already things that are wrong. That's why he's found, finding succor in looking at his laptop, pressing his phone all the time. My husband has been working at home for how many months? For a long time now, because of the pandemic. I walk in my house. I walk downstairs. After a few hours, I take out time. I go upstairs to say, how are you? What's up? You've been on this computer. I talk to him for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and I go downstairs again. Just come in. What are you coming to do? I just came to check on you. Sometimes I laugh. I say, tell your office so that they are traumatizing me. You're just here, you know, looking at this computer, working. You know, you should try and engage your spouse, even if he's not doing it. I use my phone a lot. I work a lot with my phone. My mother will come. Just tell me with authority, put down that phone right now. Because he wants my attention. Immediately he says that I put down my phone. Or I say, permit me two minutes. Let me finish what I'm doing, then we can talk. So you have to find a way to let your spouse know that I need your attention. We need to have time. We need to have, you have to be intentional about the time you spend with your spouse. You have to agree. Years ago, we used to have this thing that after a certain time in the evening, we'll have our time alone. We'll tell our children, please leave us alone. This is mommy and daddy time. You must be intentional about, this don't just fall into place and work out. You must be intentional about the time you spend with each other so that your marriage can grow and get better. Praise the Lord. The man might also be a workaholic. So you need to find a way for him to get help, to balance. There's something we call work and life balance. And it's part of what she's mentioned. Let's make it a habit to play. I discovered that a lot of spouses don't play together, especially in the church. This morning, they wrote... Uh, what I would like to see in my spouse, and like 70%, number one, I would like my spouse to be prayerful. Somebody said, I'd like him to be or her to be a prayer warrior. And I said, look, there are prayer warriors that are more wicked than the devil. I hope you know that. Don't make it your yardstick. Look for a child of God, a born-again Christian. When, if he doesn't know how to pray, God will help him. But the bottom line, the foundation is let him be a born again child of God. There are some people who are praying ritualistic prayer. Their prayer is not based on faith. They are not born again. It's like a ritual. It's a charm. And let me even use that to warn many of us. A lot of things are going on now on the internet. A lot of prayers that have no foundation on righteousness. And people are just claiming things. Please, let us, let us learn the Bible. People are just typing and claiming things. This has happened to me. Somebody posted how God has done it. The wife, the husband replied on Facebook, please, what did God do? 
<laughs> Please, prayer is not a ritual. It's not magic. It's not charm. Prayer is based on principles, Christian, biblical principles. I spent this about eight weeks here teaching about prayer. So it's not about just claiming prayer, typing prayer, and, and, and throwing, sowing seed. I will not go deeper than that because now I'll be mentioning names. I don't want to mention names. But please be careful. A lot of things are happening. Life with God is not about give me, give me, do for me. No. Think about your relationship with him. Coming back to this, people are writing, I want my spouse to be prayerful, to be this, to be that. It's not a yardstick. It's a good thing to have, but please be careful. Amen. Please, Daniel, my help us with this question. My husband finds it difficult to forgive and to say sorry, even when he's at fault. He likes apportioning blames and exonerating himself. He always feels he's perfect and others are not. I don't like the way my husband talks to me when he's angry. I want him to learn to give correction without talking down on people. Praise the Lord. This is an issue of maturity. That man is not matured to handle a home. So, what do we do? Or what do you do as a lady? Yes, it's not very easy. It's not funny. Because a lot of people have that kind of tendency. I'm the head. And because of that, I'm always right. There's something pastor said. It's about mindset. A lot of us are coming into the marriage environment with our cultural beliefs. In Igbo land, the woman cannot talk to her husband. She cannot even come to the parlor when they are discussing important things. Mindset. Cultural mindset. That's not scriptural. We are not practicing our cultural marriage systems. Many people are importing it into the church. And that's why we have a lot of problems. This is how the Yorubas do, uh, do it. This is how the Igbos do it. This is how the Ogonis do it. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what did the word of God say? We are not even doing it according to Igbo man. Because the European marriage is not a model. We are doing it as the word of God teaches us. So, if you have a husband, is he born again? That's the starting point. If he's not born again, then we'll be talking a lot of English, but there wouldn't be more change. But if he's a child of God, then he will know that he will learn according to what the word of God says. That husbands should love their wives as Christ has loved the church. That's the model. And that's the basis on which the Christian family runs. So, if he is a child of God, then come back to the word of God. You seek for advice. We will not teach the person that, yes, as a husband, you are not just being the head, but you are also the one to support that home. Nobody knows it all. There's nobody that has an answer to everything. And like we teach the young couples that are getting married, in the area of maturity, yes, we know we have different characters and characteristics of people. If the guy is a melancholy who thinks that he's always a perfectionist, there is a way we teach them to learn that, yes, you can learn to say, I'm sorry. You can know that you are not the only one that knows it all. You got married because you need a help. That the Bible says. God saw that the man needed a help. So if you don't need a help, don't get married. I tell them. If you think you are complete, you don't need to, anybody to give you an advice or tell you what to do. Don't get married. Stay alone. But once you say you want to get married, that means you need help. And that woman is there to help you out in various areas of your life. So, the woman should not give up. If he's not born again, the first thing is pray that God should touch his heart. Let him be born again. If he's born again, then bring him. Let us talk with him. And show him that he's not doing it right. Jesus is the head. Yet he took a napkin and went down and washed the feet of his disciples. That's humility. That's humility. And that applies to the home. So nobody should feel, I am boss, I'm the bossy guy. Like, uh, I think it's Basil that said it. Your wife is there struggling alone with the children and go, and you are there watching premiership. Excuse me. They don't know who you are in the UK. They don't know you. Whether Chelsea won or Man U won, what concerns you? Those boys collect their money. You, you are here, destroy your own home. Let's go down. 
The Christian family is one that we work together. We are equal with a leader. Leadership is not mastership. And that's why you go down with a woman, stay with her, walk with her, learn. When there is need to correct, I normally tell them, you correct in your bedroom. Yes, sir. Not in public. Not even in the presence of your children. No. Don't ever raise your voice in the presence of your children. That's wrong. So, we, we, we need to learn these things. We need to get matured. We need to start doing things the way the word of God says we should do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daddy. Praise the Lord. We are rounding off now. Let's not forget as fathers that our children are watching. Let's not forget as mothers that our children are watching and seeing us. There's a question they always say. Will your daughters look at you and say, I would like to marry a man like my father? Would your son look at you and say, I would love my wife to be like my mom? Praise the name of the Lord. We have to be very careful about the, that we are you know that we are role models and they are watching us to they are looking for someone to fashion their lives after and as a man if you begin to treat your wife so terribly you're going to have two camps in your house you alone and your wife and the children you don't know but that's the camp and when you are going to know very well is when your kids start having children they will just gently collect the mother from you she'll be going from one or to the other and you'll see yourself living alone because there is no friendship. The children will just be waiting for when they can take their mother away. Please, now that we have the time to make things up, God helping us, please let's just try. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm sorry and trying to build your home again. The last question is from a man who says, each time I tell, each time my son offends me, I complain to his wife and she keeps saying it's not none of her business. To her father-in-law. He said, each time my son offends me, I complain to his wife. She keeps saying it's none of her business. To, her son, to his son's wife. He said, Father, yeah, he's a granddad. Each time my son offends me and I complain to his wife, she keeps saying it's not her business. So, Maybe it's supposed to be the post to her mother, his mother. I think so. But it could be an elder who has... Yeah, but the two scenarios is that we should never say that it's not our business. My mother-in-law, who is my mother, I don't call her my mother-in-law anyway, when she stays with us, if she comes to me and tells me about her daughter, not that she will complain that she's not behaving well. The what she normally tells me, my wife works very hard. And I also tell my wife to slow down. She, she's a very hard worker. Is your head swelling? Let it swell. Is that you allowed? She works very hard. She's, I mean, that one, I give it to her. So sometimes her mom will come to me and say, my son, are you talking to your wife? The way she's working, I'm not, I'm not comfortable. Though. She needs to rest. How will it be if I tell her, I beg, that's your business, so go, and, go and discuss with your, with your daughter. That's insulting. For somebody to come to you at all to complain, it means that the person has some level of respect for you. So you should show the same respect by listening and finding how to address the matter. And then if it's a man talking about his son, reporting the son to his mom, which is his wife, the same thing. If your husband reports, brings a matter to you about your son, then you should pay attention. You should call the boy and talk to him, rebuke, correct, or discipline, as the case may be. Many parents don't discipline children anymore. It is scriptural law that we should not spare the rod. The rod can be cane, it can be mouth. And the Bible also says in that scripture later down that the rod of correction will drive out foolishness from their heart and that using the rod on a child does not kill hallelujah so we must learn to correct our children properly but not excessively one last thing I'd like to talk about before we pray what is that in now I was thinking about it here remind me now I was just thinking about is the issue of um, 
I was just thinking about as I was talking now. About children as well. No, about finances. We didn't spend too much time on finances. Eh? It's another point of problem in homes. Issue of money. It shouldn't be. A lot of men nowadays, even the younger ones, have seen, and I'm surprised, don't want their wife to work. They want her to stay at home. I will not have a problem if you are Aliko Dangote. And you can be giving her one million salary every month and you employ everybody for her to help her. I'm sure she won't complain too. You change her iPhone every six months. But if as a family we need to do things financially and it's not only because of making money. A woman who has gone to school, for example, even if she didn't go to school, everybody has personal aspirations. If you look at what they call the Maslow uh, hierarchy of needs, one of the things we find there is self-fulfillment. A woman sitting at home doing nothing cannot be fulfilled. So it's an area we need to talk about. If you insist you don't want her to go out or do anything for any reason, encourage her to start doing something. My wife was working before we got married and then she decided even then that she wanted to do things on her own. I encourage her. She works at home. If that's what works for you, encourage your wife to do something. She can learn to do whatever. Cook food, sell, make a car, make clothes, whatever. But let this woman engage their minds. Amen. Because God created all of us to be creative. But if the woman decides she doesn't want to work and it works for both of you, fine. But if a woman wants to work and a man is saying, sorry, you can't work, please, I want you to go and revisit. Go and revisit. Sit down, look at it together. Amen. I will not say by force the woman was work, but it's something, sit down, listen to her side and see how you can manage it to make it work so that she can also be happy. She's a human being as well. And then a man is having challenges with his finances. There's nothing wrong with his wife supporting him. As long as the man is having challenges and you have money, please, as a woman, bring in your resources, not only money, every resource you have to manage the home, to support the home. I say it without shame that the first house rent I paid for the house my wife and I moved into when we got married, she paid for the first rent. If at that time we had to pay in installments three times. But the first installment she paid it because she was doing business. In those days we had a slang that I learned it's an, kind of an Igbo saying because I was working I was collecting salary but you know the balance <laughs> me and my friends we told you that oh boy oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. on a leak by right on a patch by left as it's leaking here we're patching it here this thing is leaking here the, on a patch by <laughs> so she paid the first rent nothing to be ashamed about because she knew that I was hard working I had vision aspirations and God is beginning to manifest those things now. Amen. Even right now we have four children. I pay a lot of school fees. We have three children in university. It is extremely challenging. So I face that. She takes care of the home. No problem. I, she told me, don't, don't bother. Because I try, I pay, I bring her money for the house. She said, no, 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 don't worry. I take care of that. That's how it should be. Tomorrow now, when God blesses me more. And, you know, the thing land. What do, you, what do you think is the first thing I will do? As a man who fears God. Eh? Uh -uh. And it has happened sometimes. Some things will just come be, before anything happens. I say, okay, you know what? Let me surprise you. And she will receive a lot. Hey, that day, oh my God. Do you know how to speak in tongues? The tongues will be special. So, brethren, there's nothing wrong with that. This area of finance, let's not be a source of problem. How much are we talking about? Bring yours, I bring mine. When things equalize, then we manage. I, even now, I borrow money. I say, look, I need to do this. Can you give me so, so, and so? She will give me. I pay tomorrow. When she comes to ask me, you say you pay tomorrow. I say, tomorrow, not the end. <laughs> tomorrow, not the end. I mean, tomorrow is tomorrow. We another tomorrow we come. Another tomorrow we come. 
What is yours is mine. What is mine is yours. On a serious note, I pay her back. When I take, please make it a habit. If you ask your wife or your husband to lend you money, make sure you pay back. It is his or her discretion to now say, oh, no, no, don't worry, you can, you can go with it. Make it a habit to always pay back. I do that. She doesn't borrow money from me. She's, uh, it is my responsibility to take care of her. So when there's anything that needs her to borrow money, it's my responsibility. Praise God. So let's not allow money to come in between us. Money, food, sex, like she was saying earlier on, she was in to report me, it was in second service, that she prefers me to tell them what I want to eat. And I always tell them, look, I can't be thinking about that. Just give me something. And so they will bring two or three varieties of food. And because I know the forehand, <laughs> <laughs> praise God but she will prefer tell me you're eating rice and plantain you're eating swallow you're eating this I say no no just give me anything so, okay we have this we have this okay bring everything praise God <laughs> food sex and money don't let it cause problem let us pray what is that one thing if you're married that's one thing, those two things, those three things, you would like God to reorder in your home, begin to accept it now and then looking at yourself, we've heard a lot you've heard something that touched you that, ah, this area of my life I think I need to improve on it go ahead and talk to God to help you and if you're a young brother, young sister, begin to pray as well Lord, make me the best I can be, the best spouse I can be and then pray for the kind of spouse you want. Ask God to bring that person. Go ahead and talk to God. Creator of the universe. What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus. Talk to him. Can't you change all oh, you are good. Jesus, we pray. As you have requested, so shall it be for you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Every home passing through one storm or the other, I speak peace into that home. In the name of Jesus, every home finding, going through financial struggles, I call the name of the Lord concerning that trouble, that the Lord make a way for that home. In the name of Jesus any home struggling with any form of affliction my father my god intervene in that home shine your light and let darkness bow in the name of jesus as many single brothers and sisters are here believing you for that spouse that life partner my father my god open their eyes to see attract their life partners to them and cause their joy to be free thank you everlasting father for we have prayed in jesus name